Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, back in March, I did a video talking about traditional art versus digital art and some of the virtues of traditional art. And, um, you know, I think, I think there are some definitely some traditional artists that don't think that what's going on digitally is authentic or the real thing. They think it maybe is some kind of cheating because um, there are some ways to automate the experience that are a little maybe a little easier than what you might be able to do with traditional artwork. Whether that's uh, true or not, something we're going to talk about a little bit today and, and specifically talk a little bit about how the color picker can be an, a tool that makes things a lot easier, but, it, um, but how that ease doesn't equate to cheating. Um, so let's just talk about this first off. And as we talk, I'm just going to paint and I'm going to use some different ways to get color. Um, so we'll just kind of do a, a demonstration process as well as we as uh, just kind of through this workflow. And I did this a couple other times. I've, I've looked at trying to, to attack this question in a number of different ways. And, you know, I, the reason I haven't shown you those other recordings of this is I, I'm, as much as it's an interesting topic, and as much as I think we could talk about it for a good few hours and not really exhaust what we need to talk about in it. Um, this channel, I think the, the purpose of this, this YouTube channel is to, to talk about stuff like that, but it's also to, to paint, you know what I mean? So I, if we're going to have a sit down and, and, and chat session, I'd rather do that live where we can have a back and forth. My thoughts are going to be skewed by the fact that I'm an oil painter by training. This is my experience um, for most of my life is this kind of stuff is plain, uh, doing some plein air painting, doing landscape painting, doing still life painting, figurative painting, um, but it's oil on canvas. That's kind of my thing. That's what I've been doing since I was a kid with my palette. Look something like this when I'm working. I usually have a cool and a warm primary yellow, cool and a warm red, cool and warm blue. So I've got all my primaries in a warm and cool um, denomination basically so that's six total for primary colors and then I usually use like a sap green pretty nice dark transparent green and then a titanium white which is nice because it doesn't have lead in it which is really helpful for my longevity so there's eight colors is usually what I use to mix all the colors you see here all the colors you see here and so on and so on it's I love that palette I feel like um, honestly if there's one thing I don't like about digital painting it's that there's no way to get that awesome feeling of mixing color truly in the way that I do when I'm painting outside or painting in the studio with my oils. So yeah. There's just a difference. Uh, as you can see here, like this picture was done with mostly colors that I just created. Uh, that's just kind of painted out of my head. This one's of course done with true mixing of color. Um, this one's uh, done using the color picker tool to start with and then it's finished with invented color. Um, this one is used a color picker on pictures that were had nothing to do with this, this subject matter. Just found some really cool old um, vintage illustrations and just used those as like a color reference folder. Um, just took little swatches from that and made this picture. Um, this one I used, well, this is all just handmade color. So that's kind of, yeah, just all original. Um, so you see there's a, just a wide range. This one, I just used, I did use the color picker tool on this one. So there's just, I guess, like I was saying, a wide range of approaches. Um, but let's talk about that for a second. So when it comes to automating this whole thing, I think about it a lot like maybe like driving, like driving a car. You have some of those, some modern cars are, are crazy in that um, almost everything is automated. Uh, you have the brakes, the road conditions, the suspension, the the climate controls. Everything is just automated to presets, and it's just about as cozy and wonderful as it as it could be, right? Um, you have cars now that can just take the wheel from you, and just you know, and, and that's it. You know, there's no more even driving really. It's just you're just riding along, and. Um, uh, and then you go the full, fully the other direction, and and there's 
gosh, you know, I had a friend who had a, an old VW Bug, and and the, it was you know so old that you had to scrape the inside of the windows as you as you go in places. So. Um, that car, no automation, man. That thing, you feel everything in the road. And and with those tiny little tires, uh, sometimes you didn't want to feel it that much. But such a such a wild, expansive difference between you know all the luxurious automation of today, and 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 then you can go back historically, and, and even with maybe even some modern race cars like a Lotus or something, you might find a sports car like that where there's a very little automation that everything is. Is, is try the, the designers try to keep everything quote unquote pure. Um, in painting, pure painting, it looks like this. And there's no, like, if you want to be a purist, you need to paint like this, right? And they need to be out there in nature and you're, you're directly painting with the world using mixing all your colors, but that's not even enough. If you want to do tr truly pure painting, when back when I was doing a lot of plein air painting, um, as a as a kid, I was you know like 16, 17, 18 year old, and I'm plein air painting with Ray Vanilla and and a bunch of other artists, um, and and my grandmother was there, and we, you know it was, it was amazing. Um, a lot of the discussion would be around this same kind of thing. Funny enough, right? It, it would just it, same discussion, different group, different different uh, medium. Um, but there was this discussion about Kevin McPherson, who was an artist back then doing a lot of cool stuff, plein air painting, and how he only used one red, one yellow, and one blue, like this pure, super neutral primary for each of the red, yellow, and blue, and then he would use white, and then he could get all his colors from that, and how, how that was like, maybe that was the thing, you know, maybe that's the purest pure that you can find. Um, and and while I admire that, and while it's super cool, and Kevin McPherson's a great artist, um, I didn't really think that that mattered very much. Um, you could go, and I was looking at a Stan Prokopenko, who does a lot of great YouTube videos, um, had this really wonderful painter named Westerberg come do a demonstration for him. And, you know, Westerberg's palette has like 30 colors on it. It was crazy. There were so many colors. He's like four times more colors than I use. Is that not good enough? Is that not pure? Because he's not mixing color. He just has it like everything available from the tube um is that you know is that the better way to go or is that is that cheating or you know i went plein air painting with with the northern colorado plein air group the other week and um there were some chuck pastel artists who were they were um you know open up their their case and there's just like a thousand little sticks of color in there there's no color mixing going on there it's just color choosing you know and so let's let's talk about that. Is are, is one of those more pure? Is one of those better? Is one of those more real than than the other? I don't know. I don't think it matters very much. Um, I don't care if your palette has four colors or forty colors on it. I think as long as you're arriving at the right value, putting it in basically the right proportion and basically the right place on the canvas, then I think you're good. Um, it really depends on what you want to focus on as a painter, what you want to focus on as a learner, and what you want to focus on as a person. Um, for me, having had a huge history of oil painting, um, I've done this forever, and I go out and I still can do it happily, and, and mixing the color is a joy for me, and it's fast, and, and, uh, but when it comes to digital, I don't find that there's a really satisfying way to mix color, and I know you can do it in Art Rage, but, um, but I don't like it. I don't think it's a good approximation of real color mixing. I think it's much more efficient to do something like this with swatches or just sample from the picture. Um, another solution is to do something like this. Like I just threw in um, one of my old landscape plein air paintings and why not just sample from that? I can get all my colors from another photo and just paint directly on top of it. Look how familiar this is. I would just, I literally just grabbed this at random, but it's it's kind of amazing. Look at the colors of the snow are a pretty good approximation of the colors here. So I could say, wow, look at that. I'll paint the snow in. Um, and, and I feel like that's a pretty good um, approximation of the value. Yeah, it could have been a little lighter, but it, it gets you close, right? Um, and as long as the value relationship is accurate, the value itself can be a little inaccurate, if that makes any sense. You can paint a painting that's a higher key than your reference, or you paint a painting that's a lower key than your reference, but as long as those values are in relation to each other 
accurate, then you're fine. Um, so you know, I could I could get away with doing it like this. There's a, a really good YouTuber named Ross Tran who does that to a fantastic result. He take a picture of his dog and turn it into this like painting of uh, Moana from the Disney movie or whatever. You know, it's just like uh, it's hilarious. But it's he just is using that this under this photograph underneath picture he takes as a palette for getting color and I think it's a reasonable solution and I can see his his instinct for doing it because one of the things that slows you down with digital is just the color picking process I can go over here and say oh look let's look at her forehead all right for example we know that that's in this family of colors here so, but it's not red it's not yellow it's in that orange family maybe trending towards yellow if I need to, to pick one of the, over the other. And then it's not super desaturated, it's closer to the saturated side and it's closer to the light side. So I gotta make a hue choice, a value choice, and a saturation choice. And so I, I can go find that and I can look at this little swatch right here and I can say, hey, look at that. Uh, yeah, right about there, and then you can you know put it in and say, oh, that's that's good, but it's you know it's maybe it's a little bit too, a little too punchy. So let's try that, you know, and then you can you can find your way and say, hey, how how close how close was that? And you can you can check like, wow, that's actually perfect. And and so you see, yeah, that's not hard, I and mean, that's it's just mechanical. It's color matching, not color mixing, and that's what you have to do in digital. You have to color match. It's real similar to the woman who um, was painting with her box of, of Chuck Pastel. You know, she's color matching, not color mixing. And it's a skill, and it's, it's cool, and it's awesome, and it's good to know. It's very, very important to train your eye to be able to look at and discern what's going on with color temperature and color value. But um, for me and my background, I feel like I've been doing that my entire life, and it, all it does is slow me down, you know? Um, so oftentimes I'll start a painting using the color picker just to get going really fast because I think one of the virtues of digital is its speed and for me there's a lot of other considerations that are much more important than did I click the dot on the right swatch you know um, I think that's important but it's not my focus so much because um, I'm kind of in a different headspace when I'm digital painting than than maybe when I'm traditional painting but you know, I have different objectives and stuff. Um, and, and workflow is important. I think speed is a big part of workflow and we want to try to have, at least for those of us that have a lot going on with commissions and a lot going on with, with just trying to, to turn a lot of um, stuff around for shows or whatever, speed matters a lot. And that, that's double time when you have a, a little kid and a family and stuff. So. Um, but, but you know, I don't think speed is ever an excuse to quote unquote cheat. And so I'm not, not advocating for something like that. I'm advocating for the benefit of digital. And I don't think we should be afraid of the benefits. Um, it's just the same thing as a photographer using autofocus. Um, you know, for some things, probably not the best idea. But other things, autofocus is a great tool. And similar to that, I think the color picker can be a great tool for getting started. But I think also it's important to, to know the limitation of the tool, is that the color picker is, is great. Um, it really it really is, but it's limited. Um, because if I was to sample, if you look over at my big swatch over here, and I made this kind of big on purpose, let me make it even larger. Let me just tap in this area. Look how many different variations of color I'm getting as I'm moving around in, in what would be like a centimeter by centimeter area. I mean, this teeny, right? So if I were to just grab one of those colors, put it down, and and summarize that whole value with that one click, I'm and feel confident because oh gosh, you know, I got it from the picture. It's accurate. Be careful with that. That's why I, I use the color picker, but I don't trust it. You know what I mean? It's not my final. It's not my final approach. Uh, if this was like golf or something, it might be my driver it might this might be my first swing of the of of the club might be this but i never finished with this with the color picker tool is what i mean by this um because my eye tells me that even though i grabbed that color it doesn't feel like a perfect sum summation of what i need to communicate here because there's a lot more going on and so that's where you get into really needing to be able to see and translate color um and, and there's no way to really automate that. And so if I was to say, just like, do my lights, do my darks, do my um, halftones, and just sort of block in all the basic shapes using the color picker, 
and then after that I got to that's when the real painting begins so getting the whole canvas covered using the color picker doesn't bother me because it's not it's not doing the finishing work it'll never get you all the way there um, but it's just as great to, to maybe make your swatches, whether you sample from the picture and make swatches, or you make your swatches and based on approximations using your judgment of your own eye, or whether you paint on a picture like Ross Tran where you grab the pictures from your reference beneath. Uh, one of the things as far as this like cheating discussion goes, I love as much as is humanly possible to not just um, find my own reference pictures like from friends pictures or my wife's pictures or whatever but I like to do my own photo shoots before I even do a painting because that gives me total control over the whole experience from the first step all the way to the last and I know that they're my images with the lighting I like with the models I want to use and with the you know that's that's much better for me if you're if you um, if you can don't take a picture you know use your laptop or whatever you're painting on take it to your kitchen, set up a still life and paint from life. Like that's the best. But if you're going to use a picture, which some would say, oh my gosh, that's cheating because you're not painting directly from nature. Um, I think, I think painting from photo is fine. Just know that there's also limitations to it, right? Because even the best photograph is going to be limited in what it can capture in terms of color and value. So um, there are ways to learn to paint around that and to paint through that and, and to kind of compensate for that. And just like the color picker, there's some limitations you got to work with and just you can't trust it entirely. Um, what else do I want to talk about? So when you are taking your own photos, and processing your own photos. There's a really cool thing you can do there with post-processing. You can you can play with um, play with them in Lightroom and filters and presets and, and really get the colors just the way you want so that you can not just maybe paint realistic light but you can paint exaggerated or intentionally altered light and um, for a beginning artist that's nice because then you don't have to invent everything. Your reference picture can have that kind of altered chroma to start with and it, it, it opens some doors for you I think. Thank you so much for watching, and I think I'm going to have to actually finish this painting because as we're getting started, it looks like it might be kind of fun. So thanks again, and uh, you guys are the best, and yeah, take care.